Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. Today and tomorrow are Anvil Days at the ILW as the last official manufacturers at the show before Drake's unofficial underground two-day show, which we have already seen teased to have the new Ironside concept as being the feature of their show, and then the finale when all the ships of the show are going to be available again. I'm not sure if all the Warbot upgrade deals will also be reavailable, but one can hope. And Anvil at this show is a manufacturer where nothing much is new, but many things are different and may well become very different. Sometimes ships change the game, but this year for Anvil, the game has changed the ships, or it may soon. And no ship is more of an example of that than the Anvil Pisces C8R Rescue. When it came out at the 2022 IAE, I thought, cute, it's too bad it's just a tier 3 med bed, so not all that useful. Now, with Tier 3 medbeds offering respawn, it's going to be a nearly must-have minimum to do bunkers or any other FPS gameplay. The bunkers haven't changed, the ship hasn't changed, but the game has changed both of them. A respawn point just outside the mission zone changes the entire risk-reward of doing FPS missions and frankly encourages much riskier approaches. I mean, my prior approach to bunker missions was to be careful and stay protected and snipe them down by attrition. But with one of these parked outside the door, why not just rush in and spray bullets everywhere? Who cares if I die a couple times? I have plenty of spare looted armor and weapons, and I'll be getting the missions done much faster so that my revenue per hour is superior. So I know that they promised the pendulum will certainly swing back in the other direction with Death of a Spaceman mechanics, but in the meantime, it's Chubba Wumpa gameplay. So, do I spend $65 knowing that it will eventually be less valuable than it is now? Well, if you have some spare store credit sitting around, why not? Next is the Carrick. Now, the Carrick is already a great and well-loved ship, absolutely part of nearly everybody's progression plan. But its true potential has been limited by the fact that its modular pays have been restricted to box cargo only and only when automatically loaded and unloaded, manual transfer of cargo being essentially impossible. When I say that the modularity being implemented on the Retaliator being mostly excited for its future possibilities, I'm not talking about the Retaliator at all. I'm talking about this ship and also the Caterpillar. And in some respects, this even changes CIG's game. The presumption is that CIG has had to keep coming up with new ships in order to keep the revenue flowing. But I suspect that a handful of new modules for the Carrick or Caterpillar will sell just as well as a new ship, particularly since any owner of a Caterpillar or Carrick has already shattered the mental barrier of spending big bucks for ships. But honestly, if all they did was to make a cargo pod that could lower to the ground for wheeled vehicles and manual loading, that would improve the utility of the Carrick substantially. But they could add luxury passenger cabins, prisoner transport, refining, a whole bunch of other possibilities with very high shut up and take my money factors to them. The Terrapin is also a neat tough ship that's been waiting for the start of some sort of actual scanning data interception role along with the Herald and the Mercury Star Runner. The Hawk has been a mostly ignored light fighter, but sometimes frequently teased as. Soon, we will get tier one bounty hunting slash kidnapping gameplay where you will actually have to bring in the shackled and disabled bounty to the mission giver. At which point the Hawk will go from obscurity to the premier single player bounty hunting spacecraft overnight. But here is the one that really changed the most while not changing at all. The Valkyrie does not get enough credit for what an amazing dropship it is. It has two remote turrets with excellent field of vision, a top man turret, an underbelly man turret, and two door guns plus 20 jump seats, plus plenty of space for cargo and vehicles. Which means the big change is it can hold a medical Ursa. So don't even bother lowering the ramp. You have this big, well-armored, bristling with guns hard point with nearly two dozen Marines that can be a whole chorus of chubba wumping in math. Sure, CIG will out of nothing but self-defense somehow use Death of a Spaceman to dial it back. But until they do, the Valk with Anursa is the Zerg Tactics meta of ground operations. Have fun while it lasts. 
Now for an update on our giveaways. We have the special membership to help cover our travel costs. To have the channel have live in-person sizzling on coverage with its own giveaway for a whole seat. And my decision to cover SizzingCon in person is not dependent on the number hitting 100. And I will be giving away the Colossal Cargo Container Carrying Craft either way. But yes, there are right now 10 tickets in the hat. Plus the regular Grow the Channel ship giveaways for some lucky player to get the Zippy Zazzy's active as ever, the Zeus 2 Cargo, and the marvelous multiplayer multi-role mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video, just be a member for automatic entry, or subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what I call the gameplay enabled by the new respawn changes. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Danny Raymond for Ray's Guy.